The media's treatment of the Bolshevik menace at home and abroad contrasted very sharply with their treatment of Mussolini and Hitler, both of whom were treated rather positively. Mussolini in the 20s absolutely gushingly, a strong man who would shape Italy up, get the trains running on time, and put things in order. A fascist who was a solid patriot, who would get rid of the forces of uh, disorder and anarchy, uh, roll back the red menace, and that sort of thing, which is why he was treated so nicely. Uh, Hitler, Hitler was a man who had ideas full of a lot of uh, bluster and, and, and shouting, but really not as mean as he sounded. His anti-Semitism was mostly for display. Um, there was a whole give Adolf a chance school in the, that arose in American journalism at that time. Give, give Adolf a chance, he'll do okay. What Hitler and Mussolini did when they came into power, and by, by the way, I document that more fully in my book, Inventing Reality, I have about a page on that, I don't want to go into it now. What they did when they came into power, one of the untouched subjects in modern American scholarship on fascism, the obsession today is who supported Hitler, who supported, who gave the support, who was behind them, and what never seems to be dealt with, the key question, is what did they do when they came into power? What interest did they support? And what they both did, what both, Hitler, what both Hitler and Mussolini did when they came into power was abolish all independent trade unions, smash all opposition newspapers, throw political opponents into jail, round up and murder large numbers of them, cut wages by one third to one half, increase uh, increase investments in military spending dramatically, increase cartel profits, cut inheritance taxes for the rich, cut taxes for the rich. In Italy, child labor was reintroduced, and roll back all, a number of other protections and democratic gains which labor had won, such as social security insurance, uh, occupational safety laws, and, and abuses which the Italians had thought they had eliminated over a generation before returned to the work site. So fascism was a very regressive and costly thing for the working class, and was not supported by that working class. Um, the business-owned press, therefore, not surprisingly, while denouncing the Soviet Union as a menace to civilization and all that was right, manifested an open admiration for fascist Italy and a kind of cool and rather warm tolerance for giving Adolf a chance in Nazi Germany. After a while, as both of these countries showed themselves to be aggressors against Western capitalist interests after after. A while then, then opinions began to get a little more negative in the press toward them after Mussolini's invasion of Ethiopia and, and Hitler's uh, threats directed toward the West. But to the very end, don't forget, Western diplomats were never unkind to Hitler, even after they got into a war with him. There was what was called the Droll War, or the Sitzkrieg, instead of the Blitzkrieg, I was called. That is the Sitz struggle, no fighting. There was very little fighting because what they still expected and what they still wanted was for Hitler to move east and to, and to attack the Soviet Union, which indeed he did and which indeed became the major focus of World War II. Um, seven out of every ten German soldiers who were killed in World War II were killed fighting on the Eastern Front. The Soviets alone had over twice the number of divisions committed to that war than all the Western allies put together. The major fighting was there, and the victory was pretty much won in the East. It was not, if you recall, until June of 1943, 44, that the Normandy invasion took place, and the war ended in... in um, in July or May of 45. So the European, the European battles uh, really were less than a year. Um, 